Welcome back, Vicarious viewers. My name is Vicente, and today I'm bringing you the review of IT Chapter 2. First off, I'll give you a spoiler-free review, so if you haven't seen the movie, you can get my general thoughts on it and see if you want to watch it yourself. After that, I'll give you plenty of warning before I dive into my spoiler review of the movie, and I'll go into more detail, and definitely come back after you've seen it if you want to hear my thoughts and share your own. So, first off for my spoiler review, let's get into the good. First off, the cast and the character dynamics in this movie are really good. I'm glad that they were able to bring some uh, good A-list stars to the roles. James McAvoy, Jessica Chastain, Bill Hader. Bill Hader himself being a standout performance, I think. Definitely, he brings his comedy, but he definitely does good in a dramatic role as well, and he definitely brings some good emotion to his role. This movie also has a bigger budget than the first part, so they're really able to bring a lot more effects, some more grotesque imagery. They definitely up the levels of violence, too. So the cast and the character dynamics are really good in this movie. A lot of it really shines through near the beginning when they're first reuniting in a restaurant, and their dialogue is playing off one of each other as if they never left as friends. They really pick up from where they left off and it plays very well. And you see a lot of that dynamic throughout the movie. The character from when they were kids still shines through. The movie also has a bigger budget, so they're able to up the special effects. There's a lot more grotesque imagery. They up the violence even towards uh, its primary prey, which is children. So they definitely up the horror factor, and I can really appreciate that. Also included in my good side of this is the almost three-hour runtime. Being a movie buff who really likes it when they're able to adapt stories like this and include a lot more stuff, I don't mind a long movie. I know there are some people that don't like a long movie, have smaller bladders, or just can't sit that long patiently for a story like this, but it kept me at least interested throughout, and I appreciated the long runtime and fitting in as much as they could, especially with a book this size. When it comes to the bad parts of this movie, I will say that as much as their dynamic was very uh, organic throughout a lot of the movie, there were a few parts where that dialogue just kind of fell apart. There were a few parts where it was just clunky, or maybe they were trying to insert some humor in an inappropriate moment that kind of just cut the tension. And I think there were a few scenes where they definitely could have cleaned that up. But I'd say the biggest offenders were a few of the quips and one-liners that they just kind of shoehorned in there that I think they could have played better if they kept the mood serious in those scenes. But speaking of shoehorning things in, that comes to the meh side of my review, and that is the flashbacks. Because in early press releases for this movie, they said that they were bringing the kids cast back for a series of flashbacks, and a few of the shorter flashbacks, I think, played very well, just to like them going through town, the memories are coming back to them, and I think in this case, less would have been more. But when it came to some of the flashbacks, they were a little bit longer, and I think some of the scenes, well, they took place during when the first movie should have taken place, and I think they were probably just things that were left on the cutting room floor for the first movie that they saved for time, which I wish they did include in the first movie, and I think would have played better if they did include them there. Uh, maybe if they come out with a longer, uh, full-cut version of the film, I think maybe it would play better to take those scenes and move them towards that side of the story. For the most part, I'm glad that those scenes were there, but they just didn't play off as well where they put them. But overall, I enjoyed the movie. I found myself 
feeling tense for the characters in some very suspenseful moments. There were a few times that made me jump. And I really love that they upped the horror and the violence and the gore. They definitely brought more of the horror feel to this movie, and I think it played well. I'm glad that I saw it in the theaters. I definitely recommend if you are a horror fan and you did enjoy the first movie, go see this in the theaters. I think you'll have a good time. Now, I want to go into my spoiler section of this review, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, this is your time to get out, come back later, and we can talk about it. You can see my thoughts and leave your comments down below. I'll try to leave a timestamp in the description so you can jump straight to that when you do come back. So let's get into spoiler territory. And in this, I'm going to reverse the order. I'll start off with the meh. The things that weren't great, but they weren't bad, but they probably could have been improved a little bit. First off, I want to talk about Henry Bowers. In the movie, of course, he they show the flashback of him being flushed out of uh, the sewers, and that scene, I think, they is one of the ones that they probably could have included in the first movie. It was so short, um, maybe a minute long, and... I think his character could have been a little bit more menacing. There were times when I was like, okay, crazy Henry Bowers, this is appropriate. But his performance and his character just seemed a little off. I think they could have played that up better. I think he could have been a bit more menacing. And then when he finally does come into play, I did enjoy when he came out of nowhere and attacked Eddie in his bathroom and then escaped. But then when he comes back and attacks Mike, which I thought would have been a lot more serious than it was, and was hoping it would have been, because that definitely would have upped the stakes for the losers themselves losing another uh, member, either maybe if they went all the way and killed him, or did the attack where it just hospitalizes him, and they don't have him in their corner for the big battle at the end. But uh, no, it just kind of came and... He got killed, and it was gone, and it just wasn't much of a payoff for me. Next up, the the all-too-brief suicide of Stanley Uris, played by Andy Bean from Swamp Thing. It was nice to see him in this movie for as brief as he was there, because I do like that show. But uh, I think they could have spent at least another minute or two just playing up the conflict inside of him that led to him killing himself. I think that could have been a more key emotional moment in the movie that was just too brief. He was in the tub, had a little flashback scene, slid his wrists, and that was it. It just could have been better. Next up, the CGI faces, the de-aged uh, kids in some of the flashbacks. In particular, I would have to say the one that was most noticeable to me was Ben's face when they were in the underground clubhouse. Uh, that whole scene in particular, I think, could have been one of the ones that they just put into the original movie. Um, but it was probably just a side tangent that they figured they didn't have room for to make it a decently decent run to make it a decent runtime for the first movie. Um, a few of the other characters, like Eddie and um, Richie, you could kind of tell it was the CGI and just kind of took you out of the moment. But I mean, there are so many deep fakes that come out these days that are almost eerily accurate and believable that you would think like a major movie studio like this would have the budget to do a de-aging a little bit better i mean on the original actor itself so i think that could have been done a little bit better so it was like eh, it wasn't bad cgi it just could have been a little more accurate and then the search for the tokens it seemed like bill's token would have been the bike but i don't know how they would have played that off but then all of a sudden by accident he comes across uh the his interaction with Pennywise, who literally gives him his token in the form of the paper boat. 
And Bev, of course, gets hers from her old apartment. And Richie gets his token from the uh, arcade. But that one seemed like it was just kind of pushed into this one with his storyline, which I'll get into in a little bit, which I did really like. But his token just seemed to come out of nowhere in that moment. I think those searches could have been played a little bit better. They could have had some more emotional depth and development in getting their tokens and their aha moments of I have it, which uh, just didn't seem to play very well. Another meh aspect of the movie was the love triangle between Bill, Bev, and Ben. Oh, triple B. Uh, but you could see, I did enjoy, like seeing the turmoil in Ben, seeing Bill and Bev together, their emotional playing off of one another, and her her still not knowing who sent her the postcard, and kind of distantly remembering a kiss. And I was enjoying where that storyline was going, especially with her finding out that Ben was the one that wrote the postcard, and he was the one that kissed her, and where they went. But then... She just kind of wound up with him without any real, without them really uh, acknowledging Bill's feelings in any of this. I mean, they could have even played at the end where they're together and Bill could have like seen that and like acknowledged it either positively or negatively. There was just no resolution to that end of the relationship. Speaking of Bill's relationships, his wife was almost completely absent in this movie. She never comes to town. She never herself gets captured by Pennywise. And I can see with all the other things that they added in here, including the unnecessary flashbacks, which I wish they put in the first part, they left her out completely. And I think they could have, that could have added an interesting deeper dynamic to that love triangle when she showed up in town and it would have given more reason for bill and bev i mean uh, ben and bev to have their happy ending knowing that bill's wife had come and he had to rescue her and he could have had his happy ending with her realizing how much he still loved her or something to that extent and the absence of the turtle no maturin I mean, I guess for mainstream audiences going into a weird aspect of the story like that could have been kind of foreign to a lot of mainstream audiences. I don't know how well it would have played, but uh, I was kind of hoping that they would integrate that storyline in some interesting kind of way, and we just never got that. Instead, we got the... Native American storyline, which was okay. It was just meh. When it comes to the bad in this movie, like I said, their dynamics were playing really well, but a few scenes just fell apart in the dialogue. And one of them that really stood out to me was in the really good Chinese restaurant scene, which I thought played off very well. But when it got to them opening the fortune cookies and finding the messages and they're rearranging them and everything the dialogue just seemed very inorganic in that moment and it just kind of fell apart when they were reorganizing and just like talking over each other and yelling and it just didn't seem as organic um, the tension just seemed to be lost in this moment of anxiety which was coming out of nowhere in their puzzling over these one word fortune cookies and it just kind of fell apart i think all of a sudden there was just a lot of heightened anxiety in this moment over one word fortune cookies that just didn't flow organically from where their conversation had been and i think there could have been a more gradual incline to the anxiety and the fear as opposed to them just like ramping it up to 10 all of a sudden. And I don't know if there was just too much attempted insertion of humor. Uh, 
there were times when shit would get real and all of a sudden a character would say something really quippy and it would completely take away from the suspense and it received some chuckles and laughs from the theater but uh i think they could have played up the suspense and terror more in those moments and left some of the humor on the sidelines for when it was more appropriate and speaking of the humor Richie and Eddie, I think, had some great moments, and that leads me into the good. They did have some great comedic moments, playing off of one each other, quipping at each other, tearing each other down in the moment. Those really played off a lot better. Um, speaking of good, I am really glad that they included the death of Adrian Mellon in this. It was a storyline devoid from the... A storyline devoid from the miniseries, but one that was in the book that I was glad that they included here. It was one of the first events in the books that signaled the return of Pennywise, and they remain true to that here. And a great performance by uh, Xavier Dolan, who is himself a Canadian actor and director. And one of the bullies was played by... Um, Jake Weary from Animal Kingdom, where he himself plays a uh, gay criminal surfer in his crime family uh, there, turned into gay bashing bully in this movie. So I'm glad to see him getting other roles because he is a really good actor. I also really enjoyed uh, Stephen King's cameo in this and his little cuts towards uh, not writing... A good ending, which everyone kept uh, telling uh, Bill that he doesn't know how to write an ending. It was kind of their own little commentary on not everyone likes every ending, right? I will have to say um, one of the best standout performances of this movie was uh, Bill Hader playing Richie Tozer. I think he had some of the best lines, and I did enjoy that they kind of mixed up his character a little bit and they introduced his hinted at gay storyline pennywise teasing him about knowing his dirty little secret and his heartbreak at eddie's death and going to the kissing bridge where years ago he had carved in r plus e which they're hinting could have been eddie he may have been in love with him that long and maybe just all of his humor and cutting at him and talking about his mom and everything was just his way of saying, I like you. And I think they did it subtly and I think they did it well. It wasn't something played up for a big surprise or a shock value at the end where... I have expected him to just randomly come out to all of them in the quarry when they were swimming, which would have itself seemed out of place, but I think he's just coming over that fear of that side of himself, and one step at a time. He's acknowledging it, I think he's on his journey, and he may come out to them in the future, but he didn't need to come out to them yet. And as opposed to the questionable CGI for the de-aging of the child actors, I really enjoyed some of the more grotesque CGI for a lot of their other characters. For, um, what's his name? The guy that was driving uh, Henry Bowers around, and he was all zombified. Uh, Stanley Uris's grotesque spider head when they find him in the fridge. Even... In the final battle with uh, the deadlights and I did appreciate that they found a halfway point between clown Pennywise and spider Pennywise they kept the clown upper half but the grotesque spider lower half and uh, I think it was better than going full spider or full monster ooh and the fortune cookies I didn't like their wordplay with their messages, but then when all the other fortune cookies started hatching eyeballs and dead birds and bat wings, uh, that was just really creepy. I really enjoyed that. I would have freaked out too and started smacking the table. It's not real. Oh, that poor waitress. She had to clean all that shit up. <laughs> uh, 
But then at the end, with the uh, ritual of Chud, I was glad that the ritual wasn't just over and done with when they were trying it out and they did fail at first and then inadvertently realized what they had to do. It really was a battle of wills with Pennywise. They had to realize that all of their fears and anxieties were what was giving him his power. It's what they realized at the end of the first one and had kind of forgotten. They were letting that fear back in throughout this movie and they broke him down. They realized that I can't give you the power. I can't imagine you to be this huge, scary force that is destroying my life. You are something insignificant, and I need to will that insignificance into existence. I need to see you for the small, helpless creature that you are without my fear. And I think it gave... I think it gave a nice conclusion that they were able to find their willpower to be strong in the end. And it's a good message that carries across. We all need to find the will to face our fears and snuff them out. But what did you think of the movie? What was your favorite part? What was your least favorite part? What didn't just, what just didn't work for you? Uh, let me know. Hit like and subscribe if you like reviews like this. Ring that notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. And thanks for stopping in for this vicarious view.